Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is the first place award winner of the 2015 New Orleans Press Club's Excellence in Journalism Award for the category of Best TV Sports Show. Good evening, New Orleans, and welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher. Over the next hour, we're going to cover all the home teams, the New Orleans Saints, the New Orleans Pelicans. We'll talk a little college baseball, LSU, Tulane, and UNO. We'll touch on college basketball, talking about the LSU Tigers. we got a great panel to break it down for you. Garland Gillen of Fox 8 Sports and Rick Gailey of SportsNola.com. Gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for being with us. Certainly appreciate your time as always. Garland, let the folks know a little bit about what's happening over at Fox 8 Sports. Yeah, this weekend, you know, we have the Sunday night final play. It's probably going to be a lot of combine material. Uh, Deion Jones, I mean, the big story mm -hmm. with him possibly moving in the first round, so we're going to touch on that. Pelicans, I don't know where they'll be this weekend. You know, we got a big game, uh, Oklahoma City and Minnesota this weekend. So we're going to touch on that, and then we're going to deal with the implosion of uh, LSU basketball in Baton Rouge. Uh, so we're going to take all, all that on uh, final play on Sunday. Beautiful. Coach, welcome back. Uh, let the folks know a little bit about what you're involved in. It's, it's always great to be here. Uh, it's uh, Prep Recruiting Insider on Wednesday, getting ready for our 100th show next week. Really? Congratulations. Yes. Four, four years. Well, it's only 50 for me. But, uh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, that's which, fantastic. Which is a record. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> work, working with Renee. So that's uh, our last show of the season is next week. Mm -hmm. uh, WGSO Radio with Ken and Ed, the three tailgaters Great on addition. Saturday. And writing for Sports NOLA. So uh, trying to solve many of the world's problems as we go along. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least on the sports scene. Yes, it did. There you go. Yeah, we don't want to touch on Baton Rouge. We'll do that. We'll do that <laughs> 11 to 1 weekdays uh, on the radio. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Saints first. Uh, kind of a little blockbuster, a little bombshell today, right, guys? Yep. Yep. Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk has reported that Sean Payton is about to sign a four to five year extension. Now, that comes, what, three of the last four years losing seasons, back to back seven and nine seasons. He's under contract to 2018 at $8 million a year. Ooh, and, I like that. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Payton said earlier this week that he. Loves the structure of, uh, of the Saints organization, and that was one reason why he was hesitant to go anywhere else. Well, to me, that's code word for I'm in charge and nobody's telling me what to do. But with that said, your thoughts on, on, on this possible extension for Sean Payton? If he's got Drew Brees as quarterback, which uh, he also said mm -hmm. in an NFL Network interview later that that's going to happen, it's going to be easy. If he gets Drew Brees, what, he's got one year left on his deal, he gets two more after that. You got Drew Brees for three more years, then then Sean's good. Sean wasn't going to sign this extension if he didn't think Drew Brees was going to be back. If Garrett Grayson was his yeah. quarterback yeah. this year, no. then I think Sean Payton would have been Colin looking Kaepernick. for Kaepernick. Yeah, <laughs> that's, well, that's another mess. Uh, he, Saints fans <laughs> should be happy that they have Drew Brees because there's a lot of headaches in this league. I mean, when when people are talking about RG three possibly starting for another team in the NFL. Uh, People should be very happy that the Saints have Drew Brees, and Sean Payton realizes that, and he realizes that Garrett Grayson's not going to be the quarterback. Garrett Grayson might be an Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. Sits out for like four years and then gets his yes. chance, which is probably what's going to happen. Yes. He sat out one year already. He's going to have, in, once Drew signs his extension, which probably would be for two or three more years, then Garrett Grayson might get, get the start in his fifth year in the NFL, which is what Aaron Rodgers did. It turned out well for him. So Garrett Grayson can learn on a Drew Brees. Yeah, and, and again, we'll see what type of leap he takes on whether the Saints are going to go with a backup quarterback who has experience or will they allow him to be the backup going forward. So we'll see what happens there. Coach, you've been in this yeah. business for a long time. <laughs> How right. many times can you lose three of your last four seasons and be looking at an extension? And oh, by the way, $8 million a year right now, you know there's going to be a little raise with it as well. Oh, only in bizarro world <laughs> does, that, uh, does, does that work. Because it was, what, a month ago, maybe six mm -hmm. weeks ago, uh, he was going somewhere else. That was the story yes. everywhere that he was going somewhere mm -hmm. else. And I had, uh, I had published at that time that the Saints needed to get what the market would bear. Mm -hmm. And what we found out was that nobody would pay. Exactly. In today's, they will not, they will not convince me that nobody figured out what Peyton's value is, right. okay? Because if they didn't figure that out, talk about Mickey, as well as Sean, if mm -hmm. they didn't figure out what his real worth is, 
They're neglecting in their duties. That's what you're supposed to do, right. is know what everybody's value is. You know, I know, I know how much my new mutual funds are worth today, <laughs> okay? I right. keep track of my assets. So uh, they found out that in today's environment, how valuable draft choices mm -hmm. are, that you, you're not gonna trade a coach anymore like you were able to do in the past. So to keep, that's why he's still here for sure. Absolutely. I mean, it made it easy is what it, what right. it did. But now to give him an extension, and we better hope that Gary Grayson's not ready to start till no. five years yeah. from now. Amen. Because here's something else I found out. We had Zach Streif on the show, uh, Prep Recruiting Insider, last week. We had a good chance to talk with him, not only on camera, but off camera as well. Settled some things that I had questions about. But it, it's amazing to me how many of the players talk with a reverence about Drew Brees. Uh, you know, that, mm -hmm. that they, not, they just have so much respect for him as a person, as a leader, as a worker. And, and one of the things that I asked him about was how, how much, why were the Saint, was the Saints offense more effective at the end of the year when Breeze was hurt with a plantar fasciitis mm -hmm. situation right. than he was before that? And we, it's kind of why Brett Engels got fired, that the protections weren't matching up with what they were trying to do. Breeze wasn't climbing up in the pocket mm -hmm. by design. We saw that. Uh, you know, we, we talked about that, but at the end of the year he was. So they got mm -hmm. the protections, the route combinations, uh, and Breeze's technique all blended in. They went back to fundamentals, yes. went back to basics, which we all can learn that if you get away from the fundamentals, get away from the basics, then you're looking for disaster. Saints played better at the end of the year because of that. Drew Breeze has, he proved to me after he got hurt, not before he mm -hmm. got hurt, but after he got, got hurt with his foot, Number one, he, he healed quickly from the shoulder mm -hmm. injury. That was encouraging to me because that's the first thing that goes, Yes, is rapidly getting back on the field. Especially a surgically repaired shoulder. Exactly. You know, so, so that was impressive to me. But his pro progress at the end of the year after being hurt again was very impressive. I think he can go three more. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to ask you guys about that in just a couple minutes, getting back to the um, situation with Sean Payton. Guys, is this uh, a message to the fans that everything is beautiful and wonderful at Saints Drive now? Every, everybody's kind of come together. It's kumbaya. Look, y y y we just talked about it. W they, they found out that on the open market, Sean Payton wouldn't fetch draft choices. So, if anything, the, the savvy o Benson way back when would have said, hey, I got all the leverage here. Why am I going to give you an extension? I got you under contract for right. two years. You're already the highest paid coach in, in the league. You know, why should I go out of my way now and, and give, you, uh, give you an extension for maybe four to five years and then be on the hook if something doesn't work out to have to pay you, pay you that, that salary? Uh, is this about public relations or is this about truly this is our guy, we're going to keep him four to five more, we're going to make sure he's here for the next five years? I think it's, I know we're going to talk about Drew a little later, right. but it, it, I think they're, they're a package deal. And to make Drew Brees happy, you got to make Sean Payton happy. you got to mm -hmm. keep them together. And they don't want to mess that up. Um, that 61-minute press conference that Drew, uh, sorry, that Sean Payton had, I got some mixed feelings uh, uh, via other uh, uh, close uh, confidants of mine via text. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, it, it was a very heartwarming press conference. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about the potholes, uptown, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> But some people were, were kind of, you know, hesitant to take everything that he said there. You know, they're, they, they... That would be me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I shot you a text during that, during that uh, yeah, press conference. Yeah, I, mean, I know a lot of, I, I know there was, you know, it was, I mean, soundbite-wise, it was yeah. fantastic. For television. Come I, on. I, I, we were eating it up. But there was a lot of people that were hesitant because they knew that recent times that he was possibly looking at other places. Now, he said he didn't, so we got to take him at his word, but it, it was out there. Um, I... I just think that that if you have Sean and Drew, then they wanted them together. I, I think Drew said he wasn't going to go back to the Saints mm -hmm. unless Sean was there. In the same way, I mean, if you would have blown it up, you'd have let them both go. Right. And you'd have put Drew right. and traded him to Houston, where mm -hmm. they desperately need a quarterback, because that defense is pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's all they needed was get to the Super Bowl. And Sean, I, I, I know the Colts are, are saying that they never reached out. Yeah. Somebody reached out to somebody. Exactly. That, sure. Maybe Sean. Maybe Sean never talked to anybody else. 
but his agent. Absolutely. Agents but, that, talk oh, to but that, everybody. that's always the way it is. And that's the easiest yeah. way to say yeah. no one ever talked to me. Yeah. And they're not lying. No, they're not. They're not. But, but again, <laughs> the agent's behind the scenes. He's making all the contact. Yeah, they never can say, they can never, ever yeah. say, and right. you got to take them at their word. Sure. I never talked to the teams. You're mm-hmm. right. You probably no. never no, did. You didn't, didn't. But you know what? Like when Nick Saban says he never talked to Texas, right. he never did. His agent exactly. talked to Texas. Right. Exactly. Coach, what's your take? Right. Is this, is this, Letting everybody in the fan, all the fan base know we're all back to get the band back together again. Everything is wonderful, airline drive, uh, or is it something else? Uh, what, I'm trying to figure out uh, what model are they following because they're not trailblazers, okay? <laughs> right. They're going to copy somebody else's model. It's either the Pittsburgh model or it's the New England model that, that, that they're trying to follow, trying to get some stability mm-hmm. and not just on the surface. Let's do what the rest of the league's not doing. That you got three years to make the playoffs, right. dude. Are you out of here? Or sometimes even less than that. Right. Even with establishment. You, you look at Tampa and and, and, and Atlanta. Smith. And I mean, just just right. all over the place. So that I think that he's trying to. I think Tom Benson thinks of himself as a Robert Kraft uh, type of owner, or the or the Rooney family type of owner, even New York Giants family type of owner. Even though they escorted Tom Coughlin out the door. And I think he's trying to, to pattern himself after that model. So that makes him feel good about it. Hopefully, the, you know, the fans will feel good about it until they start playing bad. Well, that's, that, that, that's the key. I mean, yeah. if they come out and they're now the 7-9 season, fans are going to be calling for his head whether he's got that extension or not. And, you know, I would say, and I mentioned this to you before the, before the show, Coach, I would say that it's no big deal. It's Benson's money. But we all know that the, oh. the citizens of the state of Louisiana subsidize the team. And if you're a season ticket holder like myself, you subsidize the team as well. So it is right. coming out of our pockets. But with that said, I said this when, when, when all this ended up uh, uh, panning out that, that um, it looked like Sean Payton was going to stay and then, and then he was going to stay. I think this is a better organization. I think this is a better team with a focus Sean Payton than going out there and getting the unknown. Yes. If you're going to get sure. Sean Payton light, going to bring in a coach that was under uh, the, the tutelage of Sean Payton, you know what? I'd rather have Sean Payton as the head coach, and let's see what he can do to turn this thing around. Yeah, I didn't like the names that were coming out there. Doug no. Marone, no. you got to be kidding me. I, I mean, it, 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 it was, was scary. A, it, that was a bad deal for him in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. He, um, he uh, got the media against him. I know that's not the all end all to be all because some people don't really care uh, what the media think or uh, of of the coaches, but uh, Marone was a mess. I don't know. I don't. I just don't know who else was the names I was seeing out there to possibly the next Saints mm-hmm. coach. None of them were close, and John Gruden wasn't coming even close right. to New Orleans because mm-hmm. him and Sean Payton and John Gruden are tight. Right. So yeah, Doug Marone. That was that was the one I kept hearing, and I was like, I want no part of that guy. It's almost like they were looking for for someone they had a relationship with right. already that they thought they could bring in that would keep the Payton system in place. Mm. Better to have Sean Payton keep the Payton it's system not in Doug place. Not Doug Marone, no. Let's talk about about Drew Brees because again, this has come up. Uh, Payton says today that that they're working on the extension. There's no way he was going to play under the thirty million dollar cap figure. But the question is now, how long? You know, is it going to be a three-year extension, a four-year extension? You're going to go five years with him at this point. He's proven, as you mentioned, Coach, he's been able to play through injury. He's been able to heal very quickly. We know he keeps himself in great shape. Uh, when you look at a guy that, that age, uh, one of the things you start to look at is, you know, how quickly can they come back from injury? And that's, that's the big yes. thing. Yes. Uh, with, this, with that said, Coach, I'll take you first. Your thoughts on how long of, of an extension you think Drew Brees should get? Should it be a three-year extension? Four-year extension? I think five's pushing it, but three to right. four years? It'll match Peyton's. It'll whatever, match Peyton's? Yeah, whatever, whatever the length of time is. Right. Or it, it might be within a year of Okay. Because uh, Peyton has got to have a little bit of leeway at the end of it that if he hasn't found his answer by that particular time, then maybe it's time for him to exit and become a member of the media, like his daughter is becoming, from what I understand. Well, he, look, let's face it. Uh, you know, uh, Peyton's already been out there during the Super Bowl. He did, he did yep. a little, little uh, did some stuff with CBS. And, yeah, you know, he so wasn't he's, doing he's, any next question then, oh, was no, he? But, but he wasn't answering any questions about his future <laughs> opponents right. either, was he? No, he, he, he was he, very he, careful. He yes, he the did. The family's <laughs> becoming great reporters. If you recall last year, right. his son was the one that broke that Honors Pete was <laughs> going <laughs> to the Saints. There you go. He tweeted it out. And then he, of course, Connor retracted, but mm. he, the, it was already it was out too there. Late. Yeah, yeah, Connor's the one that broke that the Saints were drafting <laughs> Andres Pete last year. So. Oh well. What are, you, what are your thoughts? How long? I would say three years. I mean, I know we we kept replaying the bite that Drew Brees said he could play at least forty-five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think he has three great years left uh, in him. Um, that puts him at forty. 
Yeah. It's yeah. right about 40, right? Yeah. Yes, he yeah. And he, he spends his off seasons in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, I, he does a great program out there. I mean, he, he he's in probably the best shape of any one of any of the players in the entire NFL. I mean, uh, Tom Tom Brady doesn't even drink alcohol during the season. I mean, like not one sip of beer. Right. Doesn't drink coffee at all. These guys are well oiled machines. Uh, I'm not saying Drew Brees follows the same regimen. Right. I don't know his personal life at all. But uh, but Drew and and Tom Brady, you could put almost the same boat. Obviously, Brady has four Super Bowls. Drew has one. But they're very close. Uh, we talked about the Belichick, Sean Payton model. I, I know there's a lot of similarities between the, the Patriots and the Saints. I know they're extremely mm-hmm. tight. They came up to West Virginia for three days, or sorry, two practices, three days. Um, so I think he gets three years. Uh, now, I think he has three years left. I, it's probably going to be a three-year contract right. extension. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. This year yeah. and then the three years after that, which would be a total of four, yes. no doubt. Wish they wish they'd follow that New England model in, in, in drafting LSU players. That, 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 would, that would be very nice if they follow that model, yep. <laughs> because uh, Belichick has a love affair with with players that are coming out of the Southeastern Conference sure. and, and LSU. I wish they had that same mindset. Uh, Marcus Colston, and I'll start with you first, Coach. You know, I mentioned on the radio show the other day. It, it's amazing when you look at the history of great receivers with the New Orleans Saints. Danny Abramowitz was the 17th pick, uh, 17th round Round, draft choice. I think 17B, okay, (laughs) was his draft. uh, uh, When you look at Eric Martin, he was a 7th round pick. Joe Horn was an undrafted free agent they got from the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, And and then, and then of course, Marcus Colston, a 7th round pick. Four of the greatest receivers in Saints history, and none of these guys were were like number one picks like a West Chandler was back in the day. Your thoughts on on the – on the career of Marcus Colston. What a, what a great representative of not only the Saints, but of New Orleans, of doing things the right way. When, when I think of, of uh, Marcus, I just think of uh, a true professional that does everything, takes care of himself, takes care of his teammates, is always responsible, is where he's supposed to be, when he's supposed to be there, takes the results of himself and the team personally in, uh, in preparing himself. So. Uh, and when you look at all of those players that you just mentioned, very different personalities oh, from yes. one to yeah, the other Joe, to the other. Joe Horn and Marcus Colson never yeah. get uh, compared ever. <laughs> but they always prepared as a professional. Uh, so, you know, being a professional doesn't have anything to do with personality. And going back to the quarterbacks as well, uh, always doing things the right way. And that's why uh, I have no tolerance for younger players once they start taking a check, when they make a mistake off the field, mm-hmm. oh, well, he's just young. And, uh, you know, young people do that. No. If you want to be an idiot, don't take the check. Uh, and Marcus Colston uh, has earned every penny that he's yes. had because he is the consummate professional. Yep, no doubt. What can you add, Carlin, about, about the career of Marcus Colston? Were they top five uh, uh, pass combination yes. between mm-hmm. Drew Brees mm-hmm. and Marcus Colston? Uh, I mean, NFL-wise, uh, people know Marcus Colston, but they don't put him because he doesn't he doesn't ch- he doesn't talk. Right. I mean, Colston's numbers and when the careers are over with, he'll probably have better numbers than Des Bryant. Mm-hmm. It'll be close. Maybe and, one of the most underrated receivers in the history of the game. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. It, but he's they call him the Quiet Storm mm-hmm. for a reason. He barely wants to talk. I'll, I'll never forget. Uh, he had a charity where we were at Walmart, and he was giving away uh, money to to families. They could get stuff for Christmas. He didn't want to talk on camera, and it was his thing. <laughs> I, he just he shies away from the camera, and I understand why. He just does, some people just don't want to talk. Right. And it, it, if he was one of those flashy receivers with a with a that loved the, the microphone, then he probably would have got maybe some endorsements. Mm-hmm. I mean, Marcus Colston never got one, no. one endorsement ever. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember. Maybe like a local it. endorsement. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've seen him on the television with the door. No, and that's the way he wanted. I mean, I know he's part mm-hmm. owner of the Philadelphia Soul mm-hmm. in the Arena Football League, but he, I mean, he's Mr. Reliable. Uh, the, now, this past year, in the last two years, he's not been the same, obviously. But, uh, you know, taking uh, they, they pulled back on his practice time uh, right. during the weeks, during training camp. He, was, he went out there a lot in West Virginia. But, uh, he, I mean, he's going to go down as one is probably the, what, the greatest receiver of all time in the Orleans Saints. you got to believe yeah. it, 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 that. It ain't, it ain't hard, hard to call that role, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The defensive, the fans may not have known him throughout the league. Mm-hmm. 
the defensive coordinators did. You, you better believe it. And, and what about that security blanket? As I mentioned on my radio show this week, that's two years in a row now. Jimmy Graham last year now, Marcus Colston, uh, no longer there for Drew Brees. He's got some young receivers now that, that he's going to have to be able to groom and hope that he can have that same type of um, rapport that he had with, the, with those guys right. going forward. Because with Colston, just like with Graham, the back of the helmet was always open. Uh, that uh, they're, they're a vertical seam type of passing game. Uh, Air Coryell uh, going all the way back to Sid Gilman in their basic design. And when in doubt, you throw it to the back of the helmet of a tall receiver. You have vertical stretches, you have horizontal stretches, well, you also have altitude stretches as well. And when in doubt, throw it to the back of the helmet. Now, Brandon Coleman's not that guy, okay? You know, Size-wise, yeah, he, he's, he can stand out. Uh, doesn't have the flexibility, yes, and that's what I'm a, I'm a, yet. I'm going to look at him early in training camp and see if he could separate his shoulders from his hips, if he could turn and catch the ball at the back of his helmet. That's what he's got to do to become a Marcus Colston. Has shown improvement. Right. He's improved to mediocre in right. my particular. But, Coach, it can be done. Well, we, we, bo yeah. we both, all of us know Devery Henderson and what he did when he came out of LSU when he was with the Saints. Could, had speed, but couldn't catch a cold. But we remember <laughs> the graduate uh, graduation of, of him in, in terms of becoming a, a very good receiver in the NFL. C.J. Johnson had a lot to do with that. But we heard the stories of in front of the jugs machine for hours, just catching the football with his hands. And for a lot of us that watched his career at LSU and then watched him with the Saints, the light went on at some point, and he became a reliable receiver. Happens infrequently. That Devery Henderson is an unbelievable case. Uh, his roommate at LSU was Corey Webster, who I coached at St. James. And I asked Corey about that. He says, Coach, I can't even believe it. We're sitting in a basketball game. He says, I can't even believe it. Because he had trouble catching the ball all the time, and now they got him catching punts. That's unbelievable. Right. And, but it happens put the time rarely. In. But, it, but it, it can happen. Yes. Let's, and let's hope it can, because Brandon Coleman does have some outstanding athletic ability. And uh, that would be a great asset from the Saints if he could continue his development. Garland, your thoughts on, on Brandon Coleman and, and Breeze losing those security blankets? Yeah, Colston's gone. Jimmy Graham's gone. Josh Hill we thought was going to step up Lance this year. Lance Moore's gone, which, which I didn't mention. Yeah, Josh Hill didn't step up this year. Benjamin Watson mm -hmm. had to take a lot of the, uh, the, the brunt of the catches, and he had a fine season. So now you got Brandon Coleman, uh, Willie Sneed. You, you talked about these guys, seventh-rounders, undrafted. Willie mm -hmm. Sneed's undrafted. Mm -hmm. Brandon Coleman's undrafted, mm -hmm. and you got Brandon Cooks as a first right. rounder. They're going to have to pick up another uh, wide receiver in free agency. Two guys out there, and Sean Fazan right now is counting down the top 15 free agent targets for the Saints. He had two of them that I thought were really good calls Ruben Randall, mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, who's a free agent, and Anquan Bolden. Now, these are not number one receivers, no. but. They could be just as reliable as Marcus Colston is right now. I really like those are two good calls by uh, Sean. Uh, just right now, you need somebody else. I, I love Brandon Cooks right. and, and Willie Sneed and Brandon Coleman, but those are not – I don't know if those are number ones. I know Brandon Cooks is getting up to that number one status, but height-wise, yeah. he, is he going to go over the middle and catch these fantastic yeah. uh, balls? No doubt. Let's talk a little bit about some needs going forward. We'll get into the combine in a moment, but when you look at on the offensive side of the ball right now, i got to believe going into free agency – you got to be looking at the guard position. You got to be looking at the tight end position. And as you mentioned, maybe if you got some money left over, uh, maybe you're getting a receiver kind of on the cheap here. But I don't know if you can go into the season with a rookie guard uh, uh, protecting Drew Brees at this point. I think that might be a priority uh, of going into free agency and trying to get someone, maybe not, not a top dollar, but somebody that they can come in and be efficient. Yeah, right now, the most reliable guys on the line are Max Unger and Teron Armstead, mm -hmm. and that's it. Uh, Sharif is still there. He's playing right tackle. I mean, what does he have left? What, a year? Uh, they, the guards, they've run him out. I mean, you, you got Jairi gone mm -hmm. uh, last year. Uh, I went to Kansas City. It's going to come to Grubbs. my head. Yeah, Grubbs. Ben Grubbs is mm -hmm. gone. Is Tim Lolito going to yeah, step in? Right. Well, he's uh, not under contract right now. Neither him or Calamente. Both are rather restricted free agents, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So they, they definitely need some work at that yeah. position. Uh, I, I know I brought up Sean a minute ago. Uh, a, a intriguing one is a free agent, Richie Incognito. Yes. I know he had some trouble in Miami, but he had one of his best years of his career. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to pick up a guard. Yeah. They, they have to. There's not enough out there right now. Uh, luckily, the most two, I mean, 
obviously I have a, head, a former head coach on the, on the side of me here, but I got to think the left tackle and the center are the most, two, are the most important guys on the line. So at least they have those two guys. Right. But everywhere else, they got I, I, Streif. Yeah. I guess she's coming back. He's yeah. going to be the starter. Mm -hmm. Unless Andres Pete, are they going to move him well, to somewhere else? I don't think so. I think they're going to put him in tackle. But you had a conversation with Zach Streif this week. I'm sure that he's, 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 he's waiting to come back and play that right tackle position. Yes. Why don't you elaborate on that and then kind of morph into, into what you think about the guard position going forward? Right. Uh, I, I, in fact, I'd mentioned to Zach that it's my idea that you get your five best offensive linemen and you play them. Uh, right now, the Saints at center, quarterback, running back. Right up the middle, that, that's, that's where they're the strongest. Armstead, of course, at that left tackle is just going to mm -hmm. continue to be outstanding. Uh, Streif uh, said that he's going to play tackle till they tell him he can't play tackle anymore, that he's going. Because I, 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 keep, I keep trying to move him You're to guard. you trying to move on the inside. Yeah, and give him a – because I'm thinking he'd have a two more years at, at guard because what do you lose first? You lose a step. If you lose a step, you move to guard. But he's not going into it. So uh, – Andres Pete did show some ability mm -hmm. uh, and, and shows me he's an NFL player. Uh, is he better than right now Calamente uh, and Lolito? And yes, he is. You know, you got, you got really backups at those other two. The only thing about incognito, I don't know if we need to sign another Buffalo Bill for you. Good point. I, I don't think, I don't think uh, fans want any more Cowboys or Bills. <laughs> right. uh, they've gotten no. burned enough times uh, with those there's, two there's teams. There's no doubt. But looking at, at this situation, will this team be under pressure now to put this number one draft choice on the field? Oh, you, you have to be. Uh, the number one draft choice needs to play right away. And he didn't. You know, no, he didn't. And so that, but they were able to get by because the mm -hmm. other, no, other first round draft choice played right away. When you look at Andres Pete, that's a Jim Finks pick, mm -hmm. right out of the Jim Finks book. It sure is. But Jim Finks is what wouldn't be a general, his general managership in today's environment would have to change. Mm -hmm. Because in my mind, first round draft choices have got to contribute in the first year, they got to play. That's, that's just the way that it is. You've got to have cheap labor, and they got to play right away. Your second and thirds have got to contribute in the first year. may not be starters, but have to contribute. You've got to get some mileage out of your fourth and fifth, but by the second year, they've got to be strong mm -hmm. contributors, and your projects become sixth and seventh yeah. around draft choices. They've got some, something that they've got to work on. You can take some time mm -hmm. there. How many from a draft class makes it to that second contract determines how strong a draft class is. So last year's draft class is going to be, it looks like it's going to be okay. Right. You can see some oh, rationale. You can see guys. some people yeah. making it to their, to their second contract. But that's a very good point. If you've got the, if you got the 12th pick in the draft and the number of, of spots that the Saints have available, because yes. right now it's easy to say, well, they don't need somebody rather than where they need somebody. There's not many positions they can't improve themselves at. The 12th pick in the drafts got to contribute well, immediately. And I think we're going to get to the defense in a moment. What about that tight end position? No one under contract right now. Can, 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 you, squeeze, can you squeeze another season out of Ben Watson? Well, That's so. the question. That, that was a fantastic season yes. by him. I think you get to see, I mean, in, in off the field, in the locker room, I mean, he, is a, he has a powerful message. Uh, in that locker room, he wrote a book. Uh, he's well respected league wide. Uh, I think Josh Hill. I think they're going to probably want both those mm -hmm. guys to come back. Josh Hill and I, I can't, his name's going to escape me, and it's for Who good man? reason. What's that? Who man? No, uh, no I was going to talk about the, uh, the the Jimmy Graham project. Oh, uh, the, he played Buffalo. Mm -hmm. He played at Buffalo. He played basketball. If they can get him back too, uh, you know, kind of a little project guy like that. So uh, I would say tight end position is going to be very interesting. Because right now you don't have a number one. Right. I know Brandon Cooks is getting paid number one money right now. Right. But I, well, and, and look, we know that, that Breeze likes that security blanket of, of a tight end as well. Yeah. On the defensive side, this is where I'll be watching the combine over the last couple yes. of days, next couple of days. Because, again, whether it's defensive linemen, whether it's, whether it's uh, linebackers, or, or, again, someone in the defensive backfield, uh, the, the draft is uh, very, very t talented across the right. board. I've said it before on both this show and the radio show. If there was ever a year that the Saints are looking for a certain player at a certain position, they've got some depth at the positions of need this right. year on the defensive side of the ball. And i got to believe that over the next few days we'll be watching those defensive players very closely. 
Yeah, Ashawn Robinson is on a lot of mock drafts right although, now. Although I have his comments about LSU today, <laughs> I don't know will endear him to the to Saints fans much that love LSU, saying that they own the Tigers, but they did. They own the Tigers. <laughs> I, I, I went to every single game that LSU's played against Bama since probably like 2005. I've been to all of them on the road and here. They've owned them every single yes. time uh, since 2011. The, called the, the the BCS championship game is still goes down as one of the worst games I've ever mm-hmm. covered. Unless you're an Alabama fan, sure. But as right. a, a not as a, a LSU guy or an Alabama guy, just as a game I covered, it was just awful to be at. I mean, one side of the ball got nothing going. It, it was one of the worst games I've ever covered. It was over with by the way. First quarter, yeah, it was. It, it was one of the worst it, it game was plans. Depressing. It was one of the worst offensive game plans yeah. I've ever witnessed. Mm-hmm. Getting back to the main subject, though, I think Ashawn Robinson, uh, Sean, Sean put on his uh, his mock draft, put Noah Spence mm-hmm. in our defensive guy. But can can you take a chance, guys? And, and this is the thing: he's got tremendous amount of talent. But the guy had a serious drug problem. Guy wasn't smoking weed in the bathroom, okay? We well, understand he was, he was involved in meth, mm-hmm. okay? So if, when you're involved in meth, can you really bring a guy like that to New Orleans? I mean, this is Sin City. And, and I don't know if you can trust a guy like that. And once he gets a, a boatload of money at this point, no matter what he's done uh, in, in terms of turning his life around, I surely wouldn't put, make that pick, especially having and make sure that you've got to get a guy that can come in and fit in this locker room. And, and believe me, on the field, he looks like he could, he could be a, a great NFL player, but you've got to worry about what's going to happen off the field once he gets the money. Yeah, and Ashawn Robinson, what is he, 21 years old? He looks like he's like 50. Mm-hmm. You ever seen a picture of Ashawn <laughs> Robinson? He's a scary individual. I'd be definitely afraid of him. I mean, you can't go wrong with Alabama draft picks. Right. Uh, I, uh, every now and then they miss, but for the most part on defense, those guys hit. Yeah. And that that's a safe one right there, and he'll probably be available right there for the Saints yeah. and, and the teams. True. Coach? Yeah, uh, defensive line, certainly. any uh, The best one that's available, and that's what I'm interested in, mm-hmm. is how are the Saints going to determine who the best available player is? How are they going to do their ranking? from top to bottom, because it's easy to fall in love with a player at the combine. It's easy to start rationalizing uh, positions that you move people up just because you have a position of need. Fortunately for the Saints, there's enough needs uh, that they could really try to determine who the best player available is, and that's where Doug Ireland comes in. He's got to be, Jeff Ireland, yes. he's got to be able to put some rationale behind what they're doing. Uh, and and make some intelligent picks there, but uh, defensive tackle, defensive end, mm-hmm. uh, you know, edge rusher, inside. Uh, we see weak, weak the side effect linebacker. at the inside, yeah. weak side inside back right. is a critical position because we saw how much mm-hmm. better with a bad defense got mm-hmm. when Donnell Ellaby mm-hmm. played. That they were a a reputable NFL defense, so they need and and that's that's the the linebacking position I call the position adjuster, the formation adjuster. He's got to be able to play inside against the running game. He's got to adjust the formation. Sometimes get out in space and cover space. He's got to be able to make a lot of adjustments. That's a critical position for the Saints, uh, and and they don't have one right now. I mean, they, the Donnell uh, Ellaby took a uh, a pay cut. Yes, he did. Uh, and and wisely so, mm-hmm. because he's in a situation that he can contribute. But how many games are you going to get out of him? You've yes. got to have somebody else be able to step into that position as well. So any place on defense, you never have enough good <clears throat> defensive backs as well. Uh, how the Saints rank the players is going to be very interesting to me. And being able to pick the best available player is going to be quite a challenge. That can get on the field immediately and contribute. Got to play right away. I agree. You're watching Inside New Orleans Sports each and every Thursday night right here on WLAE with our live broadcast at 6 p.m. You can catch catch us on Friday nights at 10 p.m. on WLAE TV and also on Pelican Sports Television on Friday nights at 9 p.m. at the New Orleans Baton Rouge and Lafayette Markets. Garland Gillen of Fox 8 Sports, Coach Rick Gailey of SportsNola.com and WGSO Radio are our guests. 866-3200 is the phone number. Going straight to the phone lines, we come back. You're watching Inside New Orleans Sports. Don't move. Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is underwritten by... Located on Lake Pontchartrain, Brisbee's Lakefront Restaurant and Bar offers traditional West End favorites, a scenic view, oysters, and numerous tasty options. More information is available at 504-304-4125 or brisbeesrestaurant.com. Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House has been shocking here since 1979. Located at 3117 21st Street in Metairie, Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House offers raw, 
fried and grilled oysters, as well as a range of Cajun and Creole dishes. Enjoy a dozen with a smile. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thanks so much for watching Inside New Orleans Sports. Uh, great panel for you tonight. We've got Garland Gillen and Coach Rick Gailey. 866-3200. Let's head to the phone lines. Larry is in Kenner. Larry, welcome to the show. What's going on, Eric, my man? Hey, Larry, how you doing? All right. How you been, Eric? Great. Uh, nice panel you got this evening. Um, Thank you. I just want to congratulate Sean Payton. I knew he was going to say he is hard to write in New Orleans, but do you think he waited till today to make that decision because Mr. Benson won his time in court. Do you think that has something to do with it? Because if the three hours would have took over, I think he would have been gone. Right. He would have changed his mind and said, I'm gone. And thank, thank, thank you for the phone call. Guys, first of all, the, the case that's pending on, on who will ultimately have the voting shares of the, uh, of the Pelicans and Saints is in federal court. Right. Okay, this was the Fourth Circuit, Louisiana Fourth <laughs> Circuit of Appeals that, that upheld the competency right. of Tom Benson right. and, and, and also would not allow them to release the details of, of what went on w w w between him and the doctors. So, I mean, it's a completely different case. That case is still up in the air, and it's still up in the air on, on ultimately who will, who will own this franchise. Now, we do know that the court case was settled in Texas and that uh, the three R's now have, have taken over all the assets in Texas. It'll be interesting to see. That is an irre irrevocable trust. What will ultimately happen down the line here? But I, in my opinion, I, look, I think this was a, a show of solidarity with, 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 the, um, uh, with the Saints to say, look, our coach is here. Uh, we've got our staff intact. We brought back guys that are familiar with this team. Uh, Mickey's staying, obviously, and uh, we're going to go at this with a full band uh, like we did back in 06. Yeah, I don't think what happened yesterday in the uh, appeals court has anything to do with, with, with Sean Payton staying. I'm sure they've been working on this contract extension for, for a month or so, mm -hmm. ever since the press conference yes. where you know he talked for over 60 minutes about his love for New Orleans. I don't think what happened yesterday had anything to do with it. Yes. If Rita Benson got control of the team, a lot of changes would happen. Mm -hmm. uh, that, there's no doubt about that. Obviously, uh, Rita is not a big fan of a lot of people in that organization mm -hmm. right now. A lot of people will be gone, but she's not. Tom Benson runs the show. Yes. Uh, and, and, and you know that. Look, you had an insight into Tom Benson that a lot of us have never had an opportunity to do. If you would, elaborate on that for, for the audience. Yeah. I thought the, the lawsuit, first of all, was just frivolous, that he's not competent. I, I sat in a room with, with Mr. and Mrs. Benson for 30 minutes. That man is is got it all together. He's 88 years old. I pray I'm even alive at 88. Nonetheless, as sharp as Tom Benson is, uh, I don't buy any of the garbage that was spewed out there by uh, the three R's camp. Uh, he's got it together. He knows exactly what's going on. When he finished the interview, he sat back at his table, started looking over bills in a manila folder. That man has got it together. My father is 78. My dad's got it together pretty good. And if my dad would, would pray that he would be that smart and that smooth at 88 years old. Uh, he's got it together. I don't, I don't buy any of the garbage that they were spewing. Coach, your take right. on Larry's question. If you look historically, on this day, every single year, he gives Mike Florio a scoop. <laughs> really? I mean, look back at okay. it. Okay. You know? that he and Mike Florio pro football talk, uh, and this is this year's scoop. Now, that's a scoop, Coach. <laughs> that's now, right. that is a scoop. <laughs> if you want to, he, he's, he's, very, he's very smart to point that out. Mm -hmm. uh, during the bounty scandal, Mike Florio was one of the only national media members that was on Sean it, Payton's side. behind yeah. him, right. Yes, so Mike Florio has gotten preferential treatment at mm -hmm. Saints training camp every year in West Virginia. Uh, Sean Payton likes what Mike Florio does. 
uh, with w with his sight and uh, is one of his uh, better. Uh, obviously, everybody knows Jay Glazer mm -hmm. is, is is close to Sean Payton, but Mike right. Florio is right behind uh, Jay Glazer. Uh, Mike Florio has been behind Sean Payton for a long time, so there's no shock at all that he would give this story to Mike Florio. They have a great relationship. Right. And Coach? Payton, Payton loves the national media uh, yeah. much more, certainly much more than local. And uh, yeah, Glazer was his boy until Glazer said that he was leaving. I think he might have gotten ahead of it a little bit in the uh, uh, during the turmoil mm -hmm. about whether uh, Peyton was staying or not. But yeah, this is uh, that, that's that, that's part of the deal right. as well. Because do you, do you think it had anything to do with the, the court cases? No. Or do you think that, that no. at this point they, they've circled right. the wagons and and they're going full steam ahead into this season and trying to get back to the playoffs? These things take a lot of time and a lot of negotiation, a lot of back and forth. So uh, no matter how close you are, the legalese uh, takes precedence and it takes time to do it. So this has been going on, as you mentioned, for quite some time. To Homa and Greg. Greg, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Greg. Hey, I got a question. Uh, does your panel think that there's going to be another blockbuster trade like we did with Jimmy Graham out of the blue? And if not, is there anybody on the Saints roster you feel that's tradable that we can get pretty good value for? Maybe a running back for a good defensive player, and I'll hang up and listen. Thank you. See, I think that's the problem. They you know, I mean, the, I mean the, the, when you look yeah. at the, I mean, maybe yeah. Mark Ingram, but, but running backs are a dime a dozen. Right. You know, I mean, who do they have that they they could give up, they could give up that is a true asset that another team would want outside of Drew Brees? Right. Teron Armstead's going to be and, one of the best left right. tackles in the league. And you know, the Saints would be no. completely well, out of their minds. Out of their minds. Him. Out of their minds. Yeah, you could trade a tight end for a center because you're getting stronger mm -hmm. up the middle, but uh, it doesn't work the other way around, and it would be very difficult. Uh, I can't think of a single player on the no, same roster. Cam Jordan, I don't know. Could, I mean, Cam Jordan uh, had missed the game. But, yeah, and, and but yeah. and you just you just who redid his contract. Con yeah, who wants to take on that and, contract? And, and, and that means the entire the entire bonus becomes due. Right. So I mean, they're already twenty three to twenty eight million dollars uh, uh, in terms of dead money right now. So you yeah. really want to do that? And that's another consideration here when you talk about dead money. You, you trade a pl an asset. You know that that contract becomes due as well. So my guess right. is no. No, Jarris Bird, Kenny Vaccaro, right. Keenan Lewis. Um, Delvin Bro, uh, you don't want to get. Uh, no one else is going to want. Well, Delvin Bro, some other teams Delvin might want Bro him. Would, because, but, but come the, on, the, again, the Saints would be crazy. But They're and, paying him nothing. Yeah. And, they call, and the same thing was going to be said for Armstead. You're not paying these guys anything right no, now. No, right. I, I don't. I don't think. No, the, the answer is question. I don't see anybody on the team that they could give up except for Drew Brees. But Sean Payton's going getting a contract mm -hmm. extension. Drew Brees. Uh, said today they're going to get a contract extension for for Drew. Mm -hmm. um, so no, I don't I don't think yeah, anybody's trade. It's a good a good thought and a good question. Yeah, it right. is. But yeah. If you could trade dead money for right. something, yeah, we, yeah, we, right. we, we got a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. we got a lot of that. Anybody wants to bring out your dead? <laughs> but it's the, isn't that the biggest difference we're seeing now than, than the run to the Super Bowl? Assets. You had assets yeah. before. You had guys that if you wanted to trade them, they would be trade. They would be takers. When you cut a player with during that t time. Teams scoop them up. Right. I mean, last year you were pulling guys off, off, off other guys' roster Ooh. trying to fill spots, especially at the linebacker position. Exactly. So pulling guys off the street. So it's a little bit different situation. To Gray, Louisiana, and Tammy. Tammy, thanks for calling Inside New Orleans Sports. Hi. Hey, My name is Tammy, and I just want to give a shout-out to Marcus Colston. He's going to be Miss Classy, Classy Guy. Yes, he is. Thank you for the phone call. Thank you. You know, uh, interesting to see with Colson is who's who's going to want him. I, I'm really intrigued to see who's going to take a flyer on. Do him. you really think that he's going to play somewhere else for a year? I mean, I don't. I think. I mean, Devery had. We talked about Devery. Well, I know Devery. I think what the, he went to training camp. Mm -hmm. it, it, it didn't work it out. It Didn't work out. I, I, That's I'm a, intriguing to uh, you see. Know, I had someone ask me uh, after they cut him, would they bring him back at maybe a lesser salary? Well, you know, the, the bonus already becomes due at that point. Right. So I just think he, he kind of fades into the sunset, honestly. Yeah. To, to Gretna and Toby. Hey, Toby, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Yeah, you think if we can get Mike Wallace at $4 million a year, it would be worth it? I'll hang up and listen. Thank Thanks. you. Coach? Sure. <laughs> yeah, that he's he's got uh, he's a, he's a terrific player. It's what you need, and right? You need a speed guy that, yes, can, that, that can open up downfield. And, and has some toughness right. uh, as well. So. Sure. Mike well, Wallace has made his money. Yes, he has. Uh, Would he like to come but home? Since, but since he signed that monster contract, his career has gone sure. downward right. uh, quickly. But is that a byproduct of Mike Wallace not playing well or how he's being utilized in these systems? 
You know, I mean, that's also got It's usually a combination right. of the two. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's for sure. And Played so uh, well in Pittsburgh, goes to Miami, falls off the face of the earth. As, as a lot of people did. That yeah. uh, whole Miami coaching situation mm -hmm. was uh, was a mess. Right. And that was one of Jeff Ireland's hiring, I mean, signings, yes. if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. you see how well those Steelers are doing without him. Yeah. The, other receivers are stepping up or becoming two of the best uh, receivers in the league. Yep, so no doubt. Uh, I think it's more of a system thing. So that, that, I mean, yeah, that would be a good uh, call. Yeah, come every, on home. Yeah. Yeah. Every, yeah. every personnel move has to end with a comma and at what price. Yes, <laughs> especially with this team right now. Absolutely. No doubt. To Slidell and Andrew. Andrew, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Andrew. Hey, guys. How you doing? Doing great. Good, Thanks for the call. Hey, Eric and guys. Uh, question for you and your panel um do you think the Saints plan to fill uh the, the void left by Marcus Colson Jari Evans through the draft the free agency or a mixture of both I'll hang up and listen thanks a lot thanks Carl I would probably think you would start with free agency with the wide receiver spot. I know we talked about Mark, uh, I talked about, uh, I mean, we just threw out Mark, uh, sorry, uh, Wallace a second right. ago, but Ruben Randall's out there, Anquan Bolden, to name a few. I, I think you're going to probably have to go through, uh, first off, see what you get in free agency, mm -hmm. and then you, you come out empty. Then in the draft, you're going right. to have to gra grab a receiver. Uh, I've heard a lot of uh, negative talk about Laquan Treadwell. Right. About how he's not a good breakout. He can. He he's not a speed guy. Are we intrigued to see his forty time? Yeah. Because he's been getting right. a lot of heat nationally about how he can't break away from uh, defensive backs. There, that's one of the guys. And if Laquan Trello can fall into the second round, right. well, that's the kind of guys you can jump at. Absolutely. You hope. You almost. The Saints almost hope like a guy like Laquan Treadwell uh, runs like a four four or five, and all right. of a sudden people start bouncing, bouncing off of him. Down. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Coach. Yeah. Somebody's gonna fall. Uh, somebody falls all the time. Somebody from the top 10 is going to fall to the Saints yes. at 12. True. And uh, in the second round, somebody's going to fall to them that they didn't anticipate. That's that's the nature of the deal there. Uh, it's going to be tough for the Saints to fill the guard position through the draft. Right. Uh, I but agree. They, but, you know, that's, it's almost uh, got to be a veteran in my mind. Yeah, that uh, that's used to be a position you never draft mm -hmm. earlier, but that's right. become much more important now. And you're looking at both guard positions. The yes, Saints are really short in both of them. They have three tackles right. and uh, two backup guards yes. right now is what you're looking at. To Uptown and Cole. Cole, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Cole. Hey, hey guys. Uh, Eric, you know I love your show, man. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, it's crazy Marcus Colts is gone. And like Tammy said, uh, God bless him. Hope he does this thing after his career. Uh, but he was the only other player besides Drew Brees that has won a Super Bowl on this offense. And, you know, we, got all, we keep talking about we got all this young talent on the team now. Uh, is it really worth to keep Drew Brees now? I mean, I'm a diehard Drew Brees fan, but it seems mm -hmm. like we're in a rebuilding phase. So I'd just like to get y'all's thoughts on it. Thank, thank you, Cole. Don't forget Zach Street. Right. That's, that's a good yeah. point. But, yeah. Uh, um, well, I mean, could you imagine going forward right now without Brees? But I understand his, his thoughts. Right. But, I mean, remember, uh, there is a cap hit if you were to let him go for some reason. But I can't, I can't no. think, not the way he performed last year. Exactly. Right, his, guys? His, the ability for him to come back off of injury and his performance at the end of the year showed, once again showed me a lot. When you have a player like him, and once again, the players talk, talk about him with a reverence of what a great influence he has been uh, to them. Uh, it, you, you can't. You can't go forward with somebody right. else. I mean, if, and it's always, we talked about the comma and at what price. Well, with this comma is instead of who. Yeah. Okay, who, who would you possibly yeah. think of uh, instead of him? And You've got to start. If you don't have him, you're toast. Right. And he elevates all boats, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah. I mean, everybody on the field is better with Drew Brees on the field. Did, 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 have y'all seen some of the starters that ran out this year? Oh. Jimmy Clausen. Oh, come on. Jimmy Clausen started for two teams this year. He played for the Bears and the Ravens, and so did Ryan Mallett. Ryan Mallett came and turned his alarm system right. Right. Uh, yeah. they, if you look at some of the quarterbacks they ran out this year, I mean, even Johnny Manziel got a start this year, right. and he'll probably never play again in this league. Right. You be happy when you got Drew Brees. You you thank your you get that on your knees tonight, Saints fans. Yes. And you pray to God that they you got Drew Brees and you keep him for four more years. Because if you don't have him, there's gonna be some Billy Joes running back in this oh, town. Billy oh. Joe Gunrack. That's a bad memory there. That's a bad memory. <laughs> there were some awful quarterbacks in the nineties. <laughs> there surely I mean, were. I mean, Steve Walsh. You mm. don't want that. You no. don't want it. That Big was my years. childhood. Yep. Drew Brees, keep him for three, four years. They yeah. don't, I don't hear anybody else. He gives you, he gives you a chance. Yes. Now, 
fix the other side of the ball yeah. more, more than his. Because in the NFL, the Saints are a long way from being Super Bowl contenders. But in this league, you can go a long way fast. Mm -hmm. It's only a couple of players' difference from the penthouse to the outhouse in this league. Drew Brees gives you a chance. Guys, let's shift gears to basketball. Let's talk about the New Orleans Pelicans first. Um, first of all, the lat not going, not trading Ryan Anderson and Eric Gordon by the trading deadline. Look, I'm on the record. Uh, this, the, the audience of this show knows how I feel from last week. Uh, the radio show audience knows uh, how I feel on a daily basis about the way the Pelicans have handled um, uh, this team this year. Your thoughts, Garland, on, on, on how they did at the trading deadline. Uh, is it better to take a bad deal and, and, and to get some compensation or to let these two go for nothing? And that's what it came down to. What they did is exactly what I expected them to do. I expected them to make no moves. I thought that they, if they got rid of Ryan Anderson, then the playoffs were kaput. The playoffs are probably still a, a, a foregone inclusion. They're not going to make them. But if Dell Demps dealed Ryan Anderson or an Eric Gordon or a Drew Holiday, it was over with. And right now, Dell has put every all his eggs in this one basket because he might not be back next year. Uh, every move he's made ha has been a bad move. Uh, the center position, giving that much money to Ashik and uh, uh, and and Ajinsa, uh, both mistakes. Yes. It's been some bad moves, and sooner or later. I don't know who's calling the shots when it comes to the Pelicans. I don't know if it's Mickey Loomis mm -hmm. or Dell Dems. National correspondents say it's Mickey Loomis now. <sighs> that, is a, that, is a, that is one of the toughest calls in New Orleans. Well, that's scary the show. because, again, as I mentioned on, on both shows, this is a guy that's supposed to have his head all in New Orleans Saints right now. Right. You need to get under the salary cap. you got the combine. You're getting prepared for the draft. you got free agency coming up. How can you be sp splitting your duties and watching what's going on with the New Orleans Pelicans as they go to the trading deadline? So, like I said last week, this team needs a Jim Fink's type type general manager oh. to come in and to be able to take over the basketball operations. Somebody that everybody in the NBA respects, somebody that understands the way the NBA works, and everybody needs to get out the way and let them let let him let him or, or her handle this this particular franchise going forward. Uh, if not, I said it last week. You got three more years of Anthony Davis, and probably the team is not far behind right. him because I think Davis will push his way out after three years, and I think that the fan base has already become very disinterested. Yeah. <sighs> No one yeah. wants to go to the games. Anymore. No, I mean no. you can't give tickets. I, away no, right I have now. a lot of buddies that have season tickets. It is extremely hard to give away tickets to these games. Now, to, uh, maybe when an Oklahoma City comes to town, yeah. or maybe when a Kobe comes to right. town, you can give away tickets. Sure. When, Le when LeBron was in town, it was a sellout or a near sellout. Well, that, that's part of the problem, though. Corporations buy these tickets. They, they again, they utilize the tickets. They want to give them to the employees. But when you got a stack of tickets that's sitting at the front desk, first come, first serve, come take them, and and they're going to into the wastebasket. Corporations take a hard look at going, do I really want to renew? I know it's my civic duty, but do I really want to renew right. these tickets? This, uh, this administration has gotten us into a mess. It's not, a, it's not an NBA roster, contending roster from uh, beginning to end. I was, I was only surprised that there wasn't a deal made because the, the rationale right now in the NBA is that I've got to do something to make it look like I'm doing something. Yes. And, and, and uh, any good deal that Dell Demps has made lately has been an accident. Uh, and not n certainly not could, could not plan. Can we trust the guy that got us into this? And th and obviously Mickey Loomis does it because he doesn't trust the guy that got us into this mess to get us out of the mess as well. Well, I don't think Del Demps will be here next year. I just don't. I, I don't see how he I, can. I, I don't be. know how you can. I mean, Anthony Davis fell in his lap. Every other thing is blown up. Every other move is blown up in right. his face. I mean, well, early uh, he brought in a lot of backup guys. That then ended up playing well for this team, went on to other teams, played well. A lot of that maybe was the tools of Monty Williams and his staff. But this oh, this year, this year has been a disaster. Yeah. And they got to get people interested once again. And the only right. way to do that is, is, is to bring someone in that people respect that can run this team. Let's shift gears to another another team that is mm. really underachieved. And my gosh, we I sat here talking about Ben Simmons coming to LSU and <laughs> thinking, look, at the very least. You know, maybe they're going to get to the Sweet 16 when you got that much right. that that player coming in with surrounding with that young talent. Uh, it's a shame that that again Jordan Mickey didn't stay, or you know, you look at, at some of the other players that Drum Martin, yeah. Martin didn't stay. But you know, it's water on the bridge. This has been a very very disappointing season for the LSU Tigers. Look, it, it, they will be hard pressed without winning the SEC tournament, getting right. into the into the NCAA's. And they play Florida uh, this weekend. Right, and they got Kentucky at Rupp without Hornsby. Right, and, and Missouri also on, on on the on the schedule too. Yeah, Keith, Keith losing Keith Hornsby was was a major uh, uh, major problem for the uh, 
uh, LSU Fighting Tigers. I just, Ben Simmons, I didn't realize when he came to LSU how bad of a shooter he was. Right. I don't think anybody did. No, I didn't realize that. I, I knew that the talk all preseason um, was that he was a first-round pick, he's going to be number one overall, and he probably still will be. Yes. I, I, I've watched numerous uh, – since Ben Simmons and this team has struggled, I've been watching Sports Center a lot recently, and a lot of uh, uh, personnel people have come on and talked about – how you can fix a shot in the pros. So, okay, I'm, I'm with that. Okay, mm-hmm. Ben can fix his. But right now, it is broke. He cannot shoot. Right. And I just, he's not a leader. He He's passive. He's very, very passive. Yeah. I don't know who the leader on that team right now. I thought Keith Hornsby might have been the, the leader. He's right. out. Craig Victor right. it, it can ball inside, but I don't know if Craig Victor's But he's out of position. He's a four playing the five. And, and that's another problem. You know, the big guys that they've, that they've, they've, they've um, brought in and recruited have not panned out. No. Robinson was supposed to be a big seven-footer that was going to be a space eater. You know, he's done, he's done none of that. And, you know, look, the conversation, there are whispers out right there right now about Johnny Jones. Great recruiter, but, again, how do you not win with this talent? No, and you know who else didn't work out? Antonio Blakeney hadn't worked out. Brandon Sampson from Addison Prep has not worked out. Tim Quarterman but, has, but, has been up but and down. Those two guys are young. Uh, the yeah. Quarterman thing is mind-boggling mm. because you would have thought that he would be kind of the de facto leader of this team. That's the one. That's the one. That Gray's really, a senior right yeah, now. Right. He, well, he and, can't and, contribute and, to all and, either. But he's been, they, the, he's been discombobulated since they've gotten him. I mean, he was a shooter coming out of junior college, and then they try to convert him to a point guard. And now when he comes out, he seems like he tries too hard, and it's a turnover a second. Yep. Coach, what's your, what's your is, thoughts on Simmons, the Tigers? You know, nobody wants to talk about coaches getting fired, but you know what? You're ex- when you bring in that kind of talent, you're expected to at least make the NCAAs. And that was a concern of mine from the very beginning because uh, nationally the talk was, why would a Ben Simmons go to LSU? Uh, you know, with all the opportunities that he's got all over the country. Well, Johnny Jones did a great job of getting people like, like Ben Simmons and, and others, complimentary players in as well. But what does it do to the program if you have a great recruiting class like that and you don't get in the tournament? The program goes completely down the tubes because what are the chances of, with that type of failure, maintaining that level of one-and-done type of recruiting? Right. And and First of all, I think that most Tiger fans, would, after this experiment, would probably say, you know what? Leave the one and done to Kentucky. LSU is okay. kind of ruining this for right. for other programs across the country. <laughs> right. Number one picks are not going to go to these programs that are iffy anymore. That's right. They're all going to go to Kentucky right. and Kansas, right. North the, Carolina, or Duke. The, ben Simmons was an outlier. I know his godfather is on the coach and staff. Yes. Probably the main reason he went there. The only reason he went there. Yeah. Let's face it. But Ben Simmons is an outlier. This is probably not going to happen again for a long time. If Ben Simmons went to the tournament and got the Sweet 16, then other top players in the country might go, right. hey, maybe I should go to a smaller program and become a big star, uh, a big fish in a small pond. Now it, it almost comes to realization, wait, I can go to one of these smaller schools and I might not even make the tournament? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Ben Simmons and them are going to go to the NIT, and they might make a run. He might still get to New York and be in the bright lights mm-hmm. and big city. He'll probably be back in there for the draft. But this is I think LSU is ruining this for uh, oh. big-time players going forward. Right. Oh, you're looking at a very difficult situation going forward for the program. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a program problem. It's a, it's a program killer. Oh, absolutely. And we talked about right. you know, from the beginning of the year. The thing that surprised me most about Simmons is how he doesn't want the ball at the end of the game. Right. Or doesn't command the ball. I'm not going to say doesn't yeah. want it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that there were games uh, that they had the opportunity to win and you wouldn't, he just looked like he another guy. Yeah. And I was very shocked at yeah. that because a play with that, that level of skill. That has been the guy that his entire had. career, right? Exactly. No, normally, look, they, they look for the ball during yes, that time. Absolutely. No absolutely. doubt about it. So, Eric, there's, there's, there's three seasons at LSU there's, there's fall football, spring football, and baseball right yes. now. And it's been that way for a long time, and it's going to go back to that way. After this season, it, LSU basketball is going to go back in the tank for a while. Yeah. We're not going to talk about the program unless they fire Johnny Jones after what next season. I, I don't think I went to Baton Rouge four times this year. Next year, I'll probably go zero. I, I just don't see this team going further anytime soon. That, that is a shame. Garland Gillen, Coach Rick Gailey, thanks so much for being on our panel tonight here on Great. Inside You're New Orleans Sports. Thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, there's a rebroadcast of this program each and every Friday night right here on WLE at 10 p.m. And also in the New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and Lafayette markets on Friday night on Pelican Sports Television at 9 p.m. You can catch me on the radio, 990 a.m. WGSO, weekdays 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. The TuneIn Radio app is a great way to be able to take the show with you anywhere. It's a free download for your smartphone or your tablet. 
Also, you can listen live, download the podcast at ericasher.com, and all the previous episodes of the award-winning Inside New Orleans Sports can be seen at ericasher.com as well. Again, special thanks to Garland Gillen and Coach Rick Gailey, and also to the WLE production staff, including Ron Yeager, Jim Dotson, Donovan Joseph, Kenny Juno, Philip Williamson, and my director, William Hill. New Orleans, have a great week. We'll see you right back here next week, next Thursday, for Inside New Orleans Sports. Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is the first place award winner of the 2015 New Orleans Press Club's Excellence in Journalism Award for the category of Best TV Sports Show.